Lonely Man's actually starting this time. Official start. What's good? Jesse Burling game in the house with my boy Ben Basanga. What up? In the building. What's really good, my dude? Man, this trip to Texas is what's good. I'm ready. It's, it's about when to go this down. drops, we will be on our way to Austin, Texas. We may even be in Texas. Uh, I think I'm going to drop it Friday. So oh, okay. So day one, we'll be on the, in the whip whip. When this drops at midnight, we'll be sleeping, most likely, and then waking up within a few hours to drive to Austin, Texas. Yeah, this is for no apparent reason other than fuck it. By the time people actually listen to this podcast, we'll probably be back from Austin and back in Worcester. Yeah, by the time people listen to this podcast, this new strain of COVID will have taken over the world. It's it's very fast. It is the Usain Bolts of strains. It's, it'll be the, the fourth wave of uh, COVID-21. Yeah, man, it's it's not going anywhere. We better grab some Snickers. We're just hanging out. I don't, Austin might be completely locked down by the time we show up. Fuck it. I'm going to go find a paddleboard and get in some water, bro. The salt, the salt cures it, right? I'll just start busting nuts in the water and shit. Salt. Yeah, get some, some vitamin D, some salt. You good yeah. Go. yeah, so fuck it. We'll make it work, man. Apparently, Austin's like the paddleboarding capital of the world, or it's where it originated, I think. Yeah, which is dope, because paddleboarding is sick. <laughs> yeah, super... Shit, I, I think the, just... it's gonna be like 55 or 60 degrees, but I'll go paddleboarding. I'm bringing my bathing suit. Fuck it, man. If it's 55, 56, I'm bringing long sleeves. That's cold, bro. Cold is fucking the water. And if there's a draft of wind yeah. and you're wet, it's still January. It's not gonna be warm. Yeah, so. no, it's not. Not at all. But comparatively to mass, that's gonna be like butt naked weather. Like you're gonna be out here like hanging and swinging at 55. Yeah. It was 30 degrees today. That's twice as. <laughs> Warm. Uh, that sounds about the math checks out. <laughs> yeah. I'm no mathematician, but it sounds legit. Oh man. I saw this girl today. She said me, she said that she wanted you me. She wanted she was looking for a guy that was nice and honest. Yeah. I was like, which one do you want? <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't have both. Like, what are we doing here, people? You want me to be nice or do you want me to be honest? Like, yeah, if I'm honest, it's not going to be nice. Yeah, it's like it's like that Chappelle joke where he talks about Wonder Woman's weapon, the lasso of truth. Like, you don't really want the truth. Like, you catch a bad guy and you hear his thoughts. <laughs> nice tits. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what is gonna? Yeah, you can't. You can't. The truth and niceness. You can't have them both. You know what being nice is? Being nice is hiding the bad things that you're thinking. And only saying the good stuff. That's what being nice is. That's polite. So yeah, that, that's being polite. You're just like, oh, I thought this, but I'm not going to say this. And that's being kind. But you're also technically not being honest, right? Remember your girlfriend got you in trouble for guilt by for, for lying by omission? Yeah. So yeah, do you want me to do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to be honest or do you want me to be nice? You have to pick. I'm you, protecting you from the truth. And you, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you gotta pick one you can't you can't yeah. have it both ways either you want complete yeah. honestly or you want a nice guy the truth will set you free when you get broken up with because you were honest <laughs> that is the only truth that will say yeah, the truth will set you free i found that the truth has fucked people like a lot more than it's helped them mm -hmm. you never want to tell people the truth no if oj told the truth he would have got locked up the first time <laughs> the first time <laughs> Have you ever heard the OJ conspiracy theory? <laughs> Lay it on me, please. So there's um, a strong group of people. Is it the one about his son? Yes. So I was, I've heard this one. Yeah, I think there was even like a famous, someone in Hollywood that's really big was like pushing to try to make a whole documentary about it. But the mm. theory behind that is OJ came, saw that his son had committed the murder, was sitting there. So OJ... Um, let his son get away and then drove the Bronco very slowly to get all the attention on him. And that's why he was driving so slowly ah. was because he wasn't trying to get away. He was just trying to get all of the attention to give his son time to get away. Why and, did his son murder? Um, apparently the motives, that's why. And also why they say the glove didn't fit because they weren't OJ's gloves. They were the son's gloves. That's why they, they were too small. Yeah. Um, but did he have it was his son nicole wasn't his first wife right i thought she was 
Because he had two kids with Nicole. Was there another son that wasn't Nicole's son? Is that the one that murdered Nicole Sampson? I, you know, there's a, there's a whole conspiracy. <laughs> that OJ had a whole other family. There's a whole documentary about this, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So let's watch um, it live on our Patreon that we don't have. Yeah, it's the <laughs> that we don't see. So, <laughs> uh, no. Apparently. Apparently, that's the what's it called? Someone wrote a book called OJ is Innocent, and I can prove it. <laughs> that's a great title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, and I can prove it in small text. It's like OJ is innocent, and I can prove it. And I can prove it. That's no, it's just that's what the book is called. It's just in bold title. He ain't playing, he's out there. Yeah, so he said that the, the, the evidence points to Simpson's son, Jason. But was Nicole Jason's mom? That's what I want to know. Mm. Jason Simpson's mom. That's a good Google search. I think OJ had a... I watched the whole 10-hour documentary about OJ Simpson. I don't remember a damn thing about his family. Or maybe I do. Maybe I'm getting all this right. I think he had two kids with Nicole, but he had another son. Yeah, he had a son with another woman named Marguerite Whitley. Mm. Yeah, so that was their mother. That was since OJ's first wife. Yeah, so, so he had the son with her. Mm-hmm. Did the son resent Nicole because she was a white woman? That's the thing. Or because I know the media did. Or didn't black people like, is that when they started saying OJ is not black anymore? No, OJ's never really been black because OJ said he wasn't black. That's why that Jay Z lyric, "I'm not black, I'm OJ." Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. OJ crazy. really did transcend race, I guess. Yeah, black people never claimed OJ, but that's why the whole defense of like the cops like hated OJ because he was black. Like OJ was golfing with the cops every weekend. He was best friends with the police. Like the, everyone loved OJ. Except for black people. Black people never liked OJ. So maybe if it was a black cop that framed OJ. Mm, it's a possibility. I got set up by people get people. This is a weird thing that happens. Like one time I got harassed by a black police officer, and people don't understand how that's possible. But it's very simple. There are certain like a lot of police officers, it's just the culture of police one. But a black police officer just falls into that culture or is one of those black police officers that's like, I hate those Negroes that are wild and out. You just buy into it. And Isn't they're that even, a scene in like Boys in the Hood or something? Yeah. But that shit happened to me like for real. Like mm. just like that. Like straight up. I don't know if I, I've told you that story, right? You have told me some police stories. Well, this one, me and my boy, we had gone to this. Maybe I told it on this part. I don't know if I told is it. the basketball this. tournament one? Where we went to the strip club? Uh, oh, I think you did tell me that one. I don't know if you've told it on the podcast. No, where we went to the strip club and we, we walked out of the strip club. They wouldn't let us in because we were wearing sweatpants. Yeah. And then the police jumped. And these two police officers found us right after we got out and walked out. And they were like, we smell weed coming out of the car. Whose weed is it? This is before weed was legal. Yeah. They like took me and they sat us. They, the messed up part was the white cop went to go talk to my friend. They sat him down with his hands behind his back. This dude put my hands behind my back and then shoved my head down onto the hood. <laughs> what? For no reason? Bro, I'm telling you. And I'm like looking at this dude. I'm like, and so he's like, whose weed is it? And my friend, it was his car and we had weed. And he's like, it was my weed. And, and the cops. And so he's like, so I'm like, why are you still holding me like this? Like, what am I? I didn't do anything. Mm. And this cop's like, oh, you think you're so fucking smart, huh? You think you're fucking smart. And my friend's freaking out. He's like, I'm going to go to jail, man. He's over there like freaking out. He's like, bro. So then they're like, okay. They're like, have you guys been drinking? Like, yeah, we had a couple of drinks. We were buzzing at this point. We shouldn't have been driving. They, they, ch- so they checked my friend's license, registration, everything like that. They're like, okay. So they let my friend go. No ticket. They let him keep the weed. They didn't even breathalyze him nothing. Is this they a just, white friend? 
Yeah. Okay. They I don't know if I missed let, that part of the story. Or oh, no, he's white. They let him go. And then they took me to detox. I'm in the police car, in the back, handcuffed. And these cops, this cop is just talking shit to me the whole time there. It was probably yeah. like a half hour drive. He's like, oh, you're not so tough now, huh? He's like, what are you doing? going to do now, huh? You think you're so fucking smart, smart guy? You think you're so fucking tough? What now? Just talking shit to me the whole time. Yeah, they've done that to me, too, because I try to just be quiet. And they're like, oh, the lawyer over here. <laughs> Bro. So, yeah, they're just sitting there talking shit. And then they took me to detox. And they just threw me in the detox. The, the weirdest part is I never paid for the detox. They sent me a bill. I took it to the police station and demanded to see the police chief. And I was livid. I was like, I'm not paying for any of this bullshit. Yeah. I'm, I want to fill out a report. I want to file whatever. And then it just all disappeared. Uh, yeah, your record got expunged. Yeah, just all disappeared. It, it's that's like it my, never that's happened. That's my legal terms, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the fucking lawyer over here, huh? <laughs> yeah, it just disappeared. No tickets, no fines, no bills, no nothing. I didn't even pay for the detox. God damn. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'm like, I, maybe they knew something, but yeah. the cop, but I remember being at the police commissioner's office. He's like, but that officer is black. He was so confused. <laughs> and I'm like, and they're the worst. Yeah. I hate getting pulled over by a black police officer. They got a chip on their shoulder? Yeah, well, because most of those guys are like, oh, they're like the Bill Cosby type. Like, pull your pants up. Oh, yeah. Like Negroes, <laughs> that type of bullshit. Those are the type of black dudes that become police officers. These Officer Toms? Yeah, pretty <laughs> Officer Toms, yeah. A lot of Officer Toms around, but they're the worst. If I get pulled over by a black cop, I'm just like, fuck. Damn it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers <laughs> crossed we don't get pulled over on the way to Austin, Texas. We are yeah. driving down there. It's a 28-hour drive. Fingers crossed one of you guys are ha- driving if it happens. If we get pulled over in any ways, I'm jumping in the back seat regardless. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just better for everybody Yeah. if I'm not behind the wheel of the car. Yeah, p- only pull- Paul and I are driving uh, at nighttime. <laughs> Yeah, especially in the Midwest and the South. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the South is fine. Some parts, anyways. Yeah, we're we're not bringing any weed. That's for sure. No weed. No, we're not smoking weed in the car because there won't be any weed. Um, not actual weed. Only K two. I'll yeah. allow K two in the car. <laughs> spice dog. <laughs> you can smoke spice, possibly salvia. How do you feel about cartridges? Uh, that's fine. I yeah, feel they, probably. Vapes are fine, right? You'd be like, yeah. it's a vape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vape yeah. it up. Just we can't like just smoke a blunt in the whip. <laughs> nah, no, no, there will be no. It. Trust me, not. That's how I got. That's how you got popped in New York, like what a year ago. I didn't even have weed in the car. He just said he smelt it. But then again. Every cop yeah. I put, get pulled over says they smell weed, so I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah. Anytime I get pulled over, it's like, I smell weed. Yeah, well, we could be like, this is a rental car. Like, we've had it for an hour, but we didn't smoke it in. So, yeah, we did not. I so, but I don't think, I don't plan on getting pulled over. Yeah, me so either. That's, so, that's the game plan. We're going to do the speed limit. We're going to drive uh, between gonna, the We're going to what? <laughs> in between the lines. No sleeping behind the wheel. Yeah. Just drinking and driving like normal adults. <laughs> <laughs> Just snorting Adderall off the dashboard of the car while driving. Yeah, that's the thing. The one thing that'll fuck us up is don't get caught with Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah another thing. Man, remember back in the 70s? Oh, obviously, I don't remember, but like back in the 70s when people like drinking and driving drunk was like, it was like accepted. Yeah, he's just a little bust up before they had like alcohol limits and breathalyzers. Yeah, they would just let you sober up for a minute and then send you back out on the road again. Yeah, I wonder what snitch invented the breathalyzer. Ruined the, <laughs> ruin the game for everybody. There's a whole industry behind that. You got to pay to get it installed. You have to pay to get it um, like recalibrated every few months. Uh, if you don't, if you fail three times, it locks up. And then I think you got to pay for it to come like get unlocked. Oh, the interlock? Yeah. Yeah, those interlocks are fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the car breathalyzer. I don't know. I just, like, jumped to that in my brain. Yeah, those interlocks. My boy used to have one. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's so crazy because you, 
there's such a big difference, by the way, when you go to like a court, when you go to court with like a lawyer versus not a lawyer. Mm. Like if you ever get pulled over, you get a DUI or get in any trouble, go get the best lawyer you can afford. Yeah. That is like the, that's the only thing I've learned from my run-ins with the law. Like get the best lawyer you can afford. When I got arrested in upstate New York, I had to get a lawyer and he's like, we didn't even have to show up to court. He just went there and argued it for us. And then we forgot to do our community service <laughs> after like a couple of months. He emailed us. He's like, hey, can you send me your community service like paperwork? And we're like, oh, we thought that was due in like three months. He's like, no, it's due tomorrow. We're like, can you go get us an extension? He's like, yeah, I got you. <laughs> Just went to court. <laughs> yeah. Argued it for us. I'm telling That's you. That's not white privilege. My friend was Chinese and Puerto Rican. No, it's not even white privilege, bro. It's just the privilege of having money to afford a lawyer. Yeah, it was That's like a five hundred dollar lawyer. I think it was the cheapest lawyer I could find. But just the fact that I had a lawyer, like, yeah. helped everything. Well, because if you look at like a, if you have like a public defender, like one guy, he got wrongly accused of like murder, and he's like, I didn't do it. And the public defender was like, take a plea deal. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what? And this public defender has, because if you're a public defender, you're you're dealing with like. 40 50 cases your job isn't to like save people you're not doing any research or interviewing suspects or whatever your job is just like i'm trying to clear this case out of my docket that is your job it's like oh the prosecutor threw a plea deal take it we wrap up this case and go about our day Mm -hmm. and that's the public defender's job if you're expecting that guy to save you or help you you are fucked can you take out a loan to pay your lawyer bro if you can like, if you have to, bro, do it. One of my buddies, he got like a, the first time he got pulled over driving drunk, he was under uh, 21. He blew like, he blew under the legal limit because he was under 21 and driving. He got like a DWI or whatever. So mm. got in some trouble, got, had to take a bunch of classes, got fucked. Well, he was on probation for that. He got pulled over drinking and driving and blew over the legal limit. But this time he learned his lesson and got a lawyer. Dude pretty much got off like Scott. He should have learned his lesson and not driven drunk in the, <laughs> in the first and second place. Okay, now you want to get all technical. Listen, <laughs> do, 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 do you want me to be nice or do you want me to be smart? You got to pick one, all right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Nice or honest? What do you want? Nice or honest? Which one do you want? So he, uh, so he almost got off. So he pretty much got off like scot free. He got like an extended probation, had to pay like a fine or whatever. Mm. No problem. The third DUI was the problem, <laughs> but he got a lawyer and he avoided like, he avoided mandatory jail sentences. He had to just like be at home locked down for a little while and he had to get the interlock and stuff. Only like, had the new house arrest. Yeah. But I'm telling you. Had to blow a robot to start his car up every day. Yeah. And he had to do that for a while and There's all this stuff. But So much money you have to spend too. It's like over $10,000, I think. For those interlocks, though, they're so expensive. For just, like, having the DUIs. And then you have to pay for, like, classes when you have to go see whatever. Like, a, you have to go pee in a cup, like, every week. and Yeah. It's not I had good. to do a driver re-education course when I was, like, 21. Because I got so many tickets within a couple years. Uh, like, speeding and stuff like that. I was, like, reckless back when I was, like, a teenager, like, t- early 20s. Same. I, I was high in the street. Did you have to take that course? We didn't do that in Colorado. Oh. We, we weren't about that bullshit. They were like, we could pull your license or you can go take this course on a Saturday morning. I was like, I'll go do that. You only had but, to take one time? Yeah, I think it was one eight hour day. Mm. But it's wild, like the spectrum of driving offenses that are in there because there were some people that just didn't change their headlight for like a year and kept getting popped for that. And then there were like wild drunk drivers that were on like their fourth DUI who were in the same class with me. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. It was complete bullshit. Yeah. It sounds like a, I'm not going to lie. It sounds like a scam. Sounds sounds like a money grab. Total scam. I think we just like briefly like went through like the driver's ed manual and they were like, uh, yeah. So parallel parking's tough. You want to learn that? Don't speed. We did like the, he did this whole spiel on speeding for a while. Well, no shit. Yeah. And then that was that was the only like time you had to do it? Yeah, I've barely gotten any tickets 
since my record was almost completely clean. It might be clean this year. Is it six years that everything yeah, disappears? Six years in Massachusetts. That's so long. Uh, yeah. So I think my record is clean now for tickets and stuff because I was so close to like being clean of it six years ago. And then it was like Christmas Eve Eve. I got hit for doing like five over the limit. I think the guy gave me a five ticket. over for. Bro, if you yeah. get a ticket for five over, that cop's just trying to be a dick. It was like 70 or 71 and a 65. It was insane. Oh, that's yeah. a shitty ass ticket. I've been like, bro, for real, you're, you're really doing this? I drive five over for fun. Like, that's, yeah. That's, I'm still within the limits, baby. I cruise control at five over everywhere yeah. I go. As, as you should. What a, oh, man, that's a power hungry move right there. Mm-hmm. The five over speeding ticket. That's a it was like moment. right before Christmas too. I was like, "Come on, man. <laughs> come on, fucking Scrooge!" What yeah. are you? He's like, "I gotta hit my quota, dog." <laughs> <laughs> I know the month to... is coming up quick. Holidays. Not a lot of people are gonna be out on the road. Yeah, I'm getting it in while I can. The yeah. savages. Oh man, I haven't. I used to get speeding tickets for fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was reckless when I was. I mean, I was reckless at getting caught when I was in my younger days, my early 20s. That I sounds remember, like a YouTube video. Like, I'm Ben Basanga. We're going to get some speeding tickets. Let's go. <laughs> very easily get a speeding ticket. I can yeah. I can do very well. I've gotten some real reckless speeding tickets. Never going too fast. One time, though, the dude caught me. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the woman caught me and said I was going 85 and a 65. No, oh no, no, no. It was like 83 and a 65 because I wasn't going 25 over yet because it's like a different offense once you hit 25 over. I think 20 over, I think it's in Massachusetts. They could just like pull your license. Yeah, it, 20 over, really? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah. It was pretty under egregious. 20 over. 20 yeah, over was is under, pretty egregious. Yeah, it was. The crazy part was that was when I slowed down. Like, if you would have got me at the speed of things, we were probably hitting like 90 plus. It was bad. Mm. Cause I used to have to make a 45 minute drive to work every day. And there's nothing worse than when you're done with work and you've just had a miserable 12 hour day. Yeah. You're, Cause you're, you work in corporate for Walmart. So you have to go from store to store. And I live 20 minutes away and I speed home. Yeah. But 45 minute drive, you're sitting there. I was like, I'm just trying to get home. dog. I just want to get the fuck home. But. I think traffic is what the causes of all people's problems, like marriage wise. Mm. Yeah. Austin apparently is one of the worst traffic cities in America, like top five. Like drug trafficking or <laughs> human, human trafficking? trafficking? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of human trafficking in Austin. <laughs> A lot of humans are moved. So hopefully we don't get kidnapped and sold into sexual slavery when we're in Austin or get a speeding ticket. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if they're picking one of the crew, it's probably the one with the best thigh gap. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you're the you're the prime candidate to get sold into sex slavery. They could easily throw a skirt on me and put me on the corner in some heels. <laughs> people are gonna pull over. Isn't it like oh, isn't it like a bunch of people are secretly gay? Like a lot of people in power, and that's why they 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 sex traffic little boys. Uh, yeah, a lot of gay pedophiles in power, apparently. Well, that is true. There was that guy. Who yeah. famous do we know that was participating in those activities? Anyone recently? Anyone at all? I don't know. Epstein only messed with little girls, so he was a straight pedophile, which is uh, interesting. Well, okay. Does he get a, Does he get a... <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Why does you say so? He was only a straight pedophile. He's... Yeah, yeah. Oh. One thing you can say about Epstein, at least, you know. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> I just wonder if, like, a uh, gay sex traffickers would treat the kids better. <laughs> just nice if the criminals them. were gay. <laughs> yeah, the the people trafficking the kids are gay. Just, All righty, it's okay. We're just gonna touch you a little bit. Come with us. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't like this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> there's a strange hypothesis These are no hypoth- i think they would be just as evil as the straight pedophile sex traffickers are you trying to say that are you saying that gay men are just as evil as straight white men jesse all pedophile sex traffickers are equally evil okay no matter their sexual preference 
I think or you're gender. <laughs> Female sex traffickers just as evil. I'm gonna put it out there. You're, you're going wow, you're going on that shit. So you're saying Giseline is well, I, whatever happened to her? They took her up out the news so quick, huh? Ghislaine Maxwell. I don't know where she's at. No, yeah, they got her up out the paint, and then she just they disappeared her. Yeah. Do I don't know if other- she's awaiting trial. Everything's going to get extended for coronavirus. They're trying to figure out exactly like the best way to kill her, I suppose. I don't know. Do you, what, what do you think is the best way to kill someone legally? <laughs> death, death penalty? Electric chair, I guess? Yeah, but like they usually like the electric chair. But like um, Firing so a squad? Lot, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Thomas Edison, we always learn about Thomas Edison in like school and stuff, right? Thomas yeah. Edison, he invented the light bulb. Well, Thomas Edison, the thing that we don't teach us in school is that Thomas Edison is a dick, like a grade A asshole. He stole right? a lot of people's ideas. Not a lot of people. The Nikola Tesla. He robbed yeah. Nikola Tesla's life. Did Tesla invent the electric chair? Originally? No. So Tesla invented what we use now, AC alternating currents. Um, right. Thomas Edison had this other plan. It was like DC or whatever. Yeah, he had like DC. One. Yeah, it was, it was nonsense. And, and, and um, so... When Tesla was like, yo, AC is the thing. This is what we need. What Tesla did was he'd use AC currents to like kill cats and mice and stuff like that. Mm. Just to like make Tesla look like a dick. Yeah. But then fucked up. He, someone was getting electrocuted to death on the electric chair and Edison hooked it up so that it was on alternating currents, but he didn't put enough power on it. So the dude got zapped, but didn't die. Yeah. So they're just like zapping this dude, and he's just like wailing, but not dying. It was a really ugly affair, but he literally did it just to try to make Tesla look bad. So then he would just like, complete dick. R.I.P. Nikola Tesla. Yeah, the go. Yeah, Nikola Tesla was actually a deep genius. Edison was kind of just sketchy and a good businessman. Mm. But Nikola Tesla was like, he was ahead of his time. That dude, is he was a visionary. The light in your room makes it look like uh, like light is shining down from the heavens, like you're being visited from Nikola Tesla right now. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, he is shining his wisdom down on me. And <laughs> I will be smart here soon. I'm going to be... <laughs> yeah, when you go right there, it like shines down from the heavens on you. Yeah, I'm wondering why that is. <laughs> I'm literally in the same place every time we record. Have we seen this before? I don't know. I've never noticed it until now. Huh. Maybe it's just now I'm talking about Nikola Tesla, so he's feeling me now. He's just like, oh, somebody ben, noticed. Benjamin, it is I. <laughs> God, I've always wanted to be like smart like a Nikola Tesla, but I found that being smart, highly overrated. Yeah, why? Because if you look at like smart people, right? Like when was the last time we had a smart president? <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like, when was the last time we had a smart president? I don't know. I think G-Dubs was smart. I think he was just, like, ob- obfuscating stupidity. No, g Dub was not that smart. No? I think the, probably the smartest recent president we've had. Obama was pretty Ob- smart. Obama right? was probably the most, the, the, like, the actually smartest president. Before that, Ronald yeah. Reagan was an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, the older G-Dub was, he's another Bush. Um, yeah, so Jimmy, like, there, we don't. It's a weird thing that we, it's like people are like being smart. You have to be smart, but like in a different kind of way. Like people that are just smart, like just get ran through by people that are ruthless. Mm. Like we just have a lot of ruthless people in our society that'll just like steal from your smart people. And then you're like, "Ah, (laughs) here you go, smart guy. Yeah, there's just a lot of ruthless people that have smart people working for them. But like the smart guy, completely overrated. (laughs) Yeah, there's different I, smarts. There's like book smarts, and then there's uh, street smarts. That's fair. I think I'd rather have street smarts than book smarts. Yeah, be like savvy. Yeah, just like be like savvy, learn how to like talk to people, know stuff like about the whatever. Because mm. anything like school wise, you could learn, you can Google that shit or just find a nerd to figure it out for you. Mm-hmm. But how many people do you know that when you tell them you do comedy, they tell you they're terrified of talking in front of people and they could never do that? Right. Like, that's a thing that... Yeah, I know a lot of smart people that tell me that. I'm like, don't you do, like, presentations and things and, like, have to, like, explain something for an hour to, like, a group of people? 
like that terrifies me <laughs> and they're like oh that's easy you like study and just like prepare for it i'm like yeah and i like study my jokes and prepare every night and go it's the same thing yeah well the I don't, they don't have to get a laugh i guess <laughs> Well, if they, in their job, if they get a laugh, they're doing it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> they, they yeah people not... are laughing, then they're bombing. <laughs> yeah, it's very different. I'm like, I think that's also the other thing is that I think they are, they obviously think there's a lot more stakes to what they do. Mm-hmm. Like, but I don't believe in that nonsense. It all seems like, it all seems like a bunch of hooey, if you ask me. A bunch of hooey. I just, nah, I. Yeah, I don't know. I think if I had like one, if, if I'd rather be, um, I'd rather be dumb as hell, and just have like a obstinate belief in whatever I believe in, just yeah. like cannot be shaken off that belief, than be like a smart person that knows everything. Because <laughs> once you're, the more you know, the more you find out you're just fucked. Mm-hmm. It's like a, like that's why it's like ignorance is bliss. Because knowledge is depressing. <laughs> it, it is. Because the more you find out, like the more. Yeah, the you, truth hurts. Yeah. Don't just <laughs> lie to me. That's Make me I'm, feel good. <laughs> honesty might be the most overrated trait ever. Like people, are like, oh, I want honest people. Like, no one's fucking honest. Just be nice to me. Whatever <laughs> yeah. that means. <laughs> I don't even want honesty. Just be nice. Lie to me. Lie to me all the time. Like, listen, lie to me. Lie to me. But. Just be nice. And people what do you got like, going on in front of you right now? You like working on something? No, I'm just playing with screws. Just fidgeting with shit. I'm just fidgety. When I'm not high, I'm very fidgety. Fidgety. You know how I am. This is sober Ben we're talking to right now. Very sober Ben. Very sober Ben. I don't know why either. I yeah. Been, yeah. Lately, I've just been smoking so much less weed for no damn reason. That's nice. Since yeah. uh, Monktober, sober October. Yeah. So, like for example. Like, since then, or recently, like, I got, like, an eighth of weed. That eighth of weed lasted me, like, three weeks. Yeah. Which, before, an ounce of weed used to last me three weeks. <laughs> That's a lot of weed. For th- I used to make an, uh, an eighth last, like, two weeks. Yeah, well, I used to smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the difference. Is like, so, well, an ounce, no, because I gave it that. So, yeah, about, an ounce would last me about a month, I should say. Mm-hmm. But, but regardless... An eighth lasted me. So, and then so you're recently, smoking like a quarter ounce of weed every week. I was smoking, yeah, about, yeah. If it's an ounce a month, it'd be a quarter a week. Yeah. Yeah, about a gram a day. Damn. Yeah. That that checks out. Yeah. Yeah, it checks out. <laughs> I'm not all good at these numbers things, but when it comes yeah. to the weighing out, yeah, about a gram a day, give or take, which is like if you roll like a blunt. That's about a gram's worth of weed. Right. I probably smoked that with the homies back in the day. We smoked, we definitely smoked a blunt every day. Yeah. I mean, you smoke that every day, but if you're like smoking a bong, you smoke a bowl in the morning, you smoke yeah. one in the afternoon, you smoke one at night, or maybe. Yeah. Two. I can make an eighth last two weeks if I just smoked little bowl packs to myself. Yeah. Well, just I take hated a puff doing every that. once in a while. I hated doing that. I was like, oh, I'm going to smoke. I'm going to get mine. Yeah. 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 Because I, I, I'm like, I only do things one way. Either I do none of it or I go in extreme. I have no, I'm, I'm, I'm all or nothing type of person. Like, not like in that sense with, in, in weird things. Like if I'm watching a show, I don't like watching shows that I have to wait weeks for an episode to come out. Mm-hmm. I'll either not watch it or just wait till it all comes out and binge watch like 24 straight hours of the show. Yeah. Like that's the way I do things. I don't know. It's weird. Either I'm like running around all day and doing crazy stuff, or I'm just like laying in bed all of today and not getting up. I always like forget to finish shows. Like I watched seven episodes of the industry on HBO Max and did not watch the final eighth episode. And like I don't not even in the mood to right now. I I don't know. I don't know why. Is it a show or like a documentary type show? It's a show. It's really good too. The industry? But- yeah, it's about uh, like kids that just graduated you college and are working. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're like, it's about oh, what the fuck is that show? I have about? a terrible memory and recall. Anyone who's a fan of this podcast knows that. I can't remember like anything or explain anything. Oh man, 
Uh, they work. It's kids that just graduated college that work at a financial institution in London. Ooh. But is they it, mostly uh, do a lot of drugs and have sex with each other. Is this recent? Yeah, it came out like a couple months ago. The industry, huh? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you know, I thought about getting into the financial industry. So then I would have a reason to do more cocaine. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> that's 90% of the, the, the allure of the financial industry. You know? Yeah, it's there's like, one kid that does a ton of coke, a ton of molly uh they drank like every night like he's in like a rave club like every night like doing lines with chicks like banging it's, in the bathroom it's a weird thing but i found that when i used to work like super long hours and work hard all the time yeah i would party way harder yeah like it just it goes yeah, together it's just go time all the time yeah and because you're so like pent up you just it's like everything is everything is well two things one when you're working that hard you usually have more money yeah yeah Doing cocaine, having a cocaine habit, and being broke, very hard. Very hard things to maintain. Yeah, and when I was working like 60 hours a week, it was easy to buy a bag of cocaine once in a while. Yeah, and then, you know, you feel bad doing it. You're like, I'm working my ass off. I'm going to let loose. So you just let yeah. loose harder. But like, when I sit in this room all day for work, it's very hard for me to justify going out to the clubs. Not even because of COVID, but just because yeah. I don't leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's nowhere to go. So if you work in a high-paced job now or you're working long hours now, that must yeah. suck because you have nowhere to let loose. No. Yeah, that show made me miss, like, going out to clubs and bars and stuff, like, back in the day. Yeah. Or just, like, being around people. I've been watching, like, old podcasts where there's, like, a crowd of people behind them. And I'm like, this isn't, like, it seems insane to me now that that would even happen. Yeah. It's so crazy. I found that, like, I'm, like, I'm probably one of the more, like, skeptical people i know and i'm just like fuck these masks or whatever i'll wear and i just like find these things like slowly creeping on me i'll think about something i'm like people mm, yeah mm -mm." and then i'll find myself like the other day i wore my mask all the way into the car and i was driving and i had my mask on still i was like motherfucker still got this bitch on motherfucker yeah i used to make fun of people for the mask in the car and then i'll go like pick up food or something so, like, my hands are full when I leave the, the restaurant. I get in the car, and then halfway home, I realize I have the mask on my face. Yeah, but it's almost become so commonplace, you don't even realize you're having them on anymore. No, I was no. talking to my uncle about it, how, like, I never lose, like, my wallet or my keys or anything because I'm, like, constantly, like, checking that they're on me. Um, and he's like, you know what you never check, though? The mask. I was like, yeah, there's so many times I pull up to the store and I don't have a mask on me. Like, there's not an extra one in my glove box. It's not in my coat. Like, I didn't even, I still don't think about the mask when I leave the house. No, I just keep one in my car because I just, I keep it in the car all the time. Yeah. So I just never take it out of the car. So I always have one in there because I had a ton of extra ones in my glove box from work, but then it was gross to have all these used masks in my, in my glove box. So I threw them all away and then I needed one like a, like two days later. Is that how it always goes, though? Right yeah. when you get rid of something, then you need it. Yeah, that's course. how hoarders began. <laughs> yeah, because it's like if, with that, because like people will hoard shit that they use like once a year or like yeah. once every like three years, and people would just hoard shit. My cousin bought my grandmother's old house and like renovated it, and apparently my grandmother was a hoarder, and she would save old like milk jugs was one of her big things. Like, and like my other cousin was saying that she used to get like bathed with the old milk jugs like my grandmother would like fill them up and like pour water on her head to like wash her hair and stuff or like cut them in half and make like a funnel <laughs> how many old milk jugs do you need she had like hundreds of them and then i think uh perfume bottles was another thing that she hoarded she thought they were going to be worth money someday Probably and like maybe that was true back in like the 20s or something <laughs> Yeah, well, she should have been hoarding them Pokemon cards. Is what she should have been hoarding. Dude, the Pokemon <laughs> market exploded this year, right? Pokemon, yeah, just they came back. So that means whatever fad comes up of like new stuff or whatever becomes the big like cards or whatever, mm. I've just learned I'm just gonna buy them and then hoard them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, just wait like forty years. We'll a see guy that. I follow on Instagram sold a couple cards for like a hundred thousand dollars each this year, and he bought them for a few thousand bucks like just a year or two ago. It was sitting on him. That is crazy. Yeah. Fucking Charizard. And then another guy that he follows bought like a huge box of like 
I don't know what comes in those big boxes, like two hundred cards or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he got he bought one of those for like ten thousand dollars, and then there were like multiple thousand dollar cards in there. I just want to know who likes Pokemon that much and can afford to pay a hundred thousand dollars for the cards. <laughs> who I want to meet that intersection of person. That's, that's interesting. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like that loves Pokemon that much. But well, has Pokemon's been out money. for over 20 years now. Yeah, Pokemon came out when we were kids. Yeah, so <coughs> yeah, now we're in our 30s, so maybe someone in their 30s got money. Or maybe someone in their 40s. Maybe someone was like 20 or like late teens when Pokemon came out. They got into it and... Nah, there's a hell of people even in their 20s and 30s with money. Yeah. I mean, 30, shit, 30, we're on the downside of an NBA career, doc. <laughs> Where you would be like, you would be top at 33, you would be like, I would probably be in the, I'd say 60th percentile. I'd probably yeah. be in like the top like 30% of all those NBA players and you'd be like the top like 20%. How old is LeBron? 36. Damn. But LeBron is also like the oldest player in the NBA pretty much. Yeah. And he's a like, super athlete. Yeah. Well, LeBron's not really human. I don't know if you know this. Anytime LeBron gets hurt, he just fixes his injury by tying his shoes tighter. And I don't, I don't know how that works, but LeBron could get hit in the head and then he'll tie his shoes tighter and just be fine. <laughs> I don't understand how it works, but he solves everything just by tying his shoes tighter. That's the LeBron move. He's got some sort of like medicine pump in his shoes. <laughs> he, like, I, I thought it was, I always used to think like a lot of people think like he's like on steroids and like drugs and like takes a bunch of supplements and stuff. Yeah. Like takes a bunch of like illegal stuff. But I thought about it, and there's just no way. Because for any, like, as an athlete, like, if you've looked up any athlete that's taken, like, performance-enhancing drugs or taken, like, steroids or anything like that for extended periods of time, yeah, your body just breaks down and gets injured. It, because the, when you take those things, it's not sustainable. So one of two things happens either you become dependent on that and then try to stop or you fail a drug test or whatever. And then your body like can't perform without it. Mm. Or you take so much that it starts having adverse effects. Like, and then once you try to stop it, your body's actual like system and your muscles aren't what they thought they were because they were being pumped up by those, by those substances. So when you do that over time, your body will just, it doesn't work over time. Like you, you will pay the price by injury. You will pay the price by getting, drug con or by health effects it just anyone that's taken like steroids or those types of drugs for extended periods of time yeah. it happens it happens to all of them in every sport and that's why i'm like i don't think lebron's been taking those things but they also did some study they said that he spends over a million dollars on his body every year that's, and like it's worthwhile investing i guess yeah it is and connor they asked connor mcgregor he was like lebron spends a million dollars on his body every year and i'm spending like 50,000 like what are we doing mm. out here but it's like you even ask his teammates and they're like while they're after games they're over here drinking beers and celebrating or whatever LeBron's taking an ice bath like yeah. he's just a different type of human being and that's is he sober he's, or is he just not party no he's, he's not a big partier he drinks wine but I don't think he uh I don't know I don't think he's like a like a crazy is that for health though. benefits that's part of the million dollars of like buying like thousand dollar bottles of wine just like have one Probably. glass every night yeah he's a he's a big wine guy and he's like he takes his teammates on wine tours and stuff I'm like man but I guess if you if you it's always it must be weird being in like a sports locker room because everyone's salaries now are public right yeah like to us we're like yeah but we're like, oh, you're NBA. But there's like some guy in the locker room that's getting paid like $800,000. And then there's some guy in the locker room that's getting paid like $35 million. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you... being in a, a comedy green room. You have a rough idea of what like the headline of the host and the feature act are making. And there's like a huge disparity there. Yeah. Well, especially if you're me and you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, you're doing that guest spot for free. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also, there is a huge disparity, but I think the numbers aren't as big in comedy. Um, no, not even close. Yeah. What's I mean, LeBron's contract? What's he making this season? LeBron's contract right now? I think he just signed a, let me find out. I think he just signed uh, an extension. Um, 
So, yeah, he signed a four-year, $153 million contract. I um, can't. With an average salary yeah. of $38 million base. And then, yeah. He's, so he's only making thirty-seven because a million goes to his body. So Yeah, he's – well, and then if you count the taxes. Mm. Well, yeah, so he's making thirty-nine mil this season is his contract. Does he live in California now, playing for the Lakers? Yeah, yeah, he moved to California. Uh, so he's getting taxed at the app. It's like 13%, I think. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, good thing, because in 2021, his salary goes up to $41 million. Nice. And then in 2022, it goes up to $44 million. I wonder what I spend on my body every year now that I think about it. My gym membership is like $70 a month. Are you still going to the gym frequently? I haven't. I should have canceled it for this month, honestly. <clears throat> I took a month off to try to get my finger back in shape because I want to climb when we're in Austin. I'm bringing my shoes down there. Oh, dope. I'm going to go to a gym at some point. Have you been looking up at like uh, rock climbing gyms in Austin? Yeah, there's like three or four, I think. So I'm just going to go to whatever like the cheapest one is or maybe the closest one, depending on what the traffic's like when we're down there. Yeah, yeah. Go Maybe I'll go. A day pass is like 15, 20 bucks. Maybe I'll go with you to one of those things. Yeah, you should, baby. Yeah. I mean, not to climb, just to meet some climbing girls. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> check me out, dude. Some boulder bays. <laughs> some boulder bay. No, those live in Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to meet any of those boulder bays. Like, I left for a reason. Yeah, we can tell. We can spot them a mile away. They're usually driving a Subaru um, or they're driving a BMW. Colorado's not that far from Texas, right? 14 hours, give or take. Oh, yeah. The Colorado River goes down there. Yes, the Colorado River goes a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not a big deal that it's in Texas. Uh, yeah, because, well, like, I thought about that when they're like, they call it the Mississippi River, but then you find out the Mississippi traverses, like, the whole United States. Yeah. They're like, ah. Uh, Does it start? No, it doesn't. Mississippi's like way down south. So, like, where does it start? Does it yeah. end in Mississippi? That's a great question. I don't Is Mississippi on the coast? Am I an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like uh, the Colorado River, right? It runs through like Las Vegas. It goes through the Hoover Dam. Really? Like, yeah. It's like, I guess it's called the Colorado River because it starts in Colorado, but it goes through Utah. It goes through Arizona, Nevada, and the Hoover Dam, mm. and then all the way down to like California and Baja, like Mexico, like area. It goes to Austin, Texas, doesn't it? Not, uh, not the Colorado River. What am I thinking of? I thought the Colorado River was in Texas for some reason. Nah, I don't think so, bro. I think it, maybe that's the Mississippi. <laughs> 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 We all right, we clearly know nothing about anything. I don't know shit about shit. Where did I see that the Colorado River is in Texas? I think yeah, I think you made that up. Um, <laughs> the Mississippi River goes all the way from like Canada. Am I thinking of the Rio Grande? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that may be who you're thinking of. The Rio Grande. <laughs> Rio Grande sounds like he was a like a, a movie star from Mexico in the seventies. Nope. Okay, good one. Bombed. Yeah, the Rio Grande is in Texas. That's the one. There is a Colorado River in Texas. I'm not. I'm not stupid. Not the the Colorado River. I get. Maybe those are they're appropriating the name. The Colorado River is an approximately 862 mile long river in the U.S. state of Texas. It is the 18th longest river in the United States and the longest river with both its source and its mouth within Texas. Texas has its own Colorado River. That's the Rio Grande, I believe. How am I making this up? The Colorado River, parentheses, Texas. All right, so I'm not wrong. It's just not the one. You're thinking of, like, the the actual Colorado River. Colorado. <laughs> okay. It's, so it's the Rio Colorado. It's not the Rio Grande. Wow. Yeah, all right. Yeah, because I saw people were paddleboarded on the Colorado River in, in Austin. 
What in the hell? Wait a second. Yeah. Why, yeah. why is there a Colorado River in Texas? I don't know. That's interesting. But it looks like... It's just like there's different town names. Like, you're from Westminster, Colorado. There's a Westminster, uh, Massachusetts. I guess, but that seems dumber than hell. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many rivers, they just started reusing the names. You guys can come up with one new river? Like, one new name? <laughs> Maybe it was one of my ancestors that was founding Texas. It was like, oh, this is the Colorado River, right? Like this looks, it's, this looks like the river I saw in Utah. This is probably the Colorado River. Yeah, no. Are you just staring at a map right now? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just dumbfounded. That's this is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, because I've been looking up things about Austin, Texas, and I keep seeing like a picture. Like I'll go on Instagram and look up locations, and I'll see people like. On the Colorado River in Austin. Huh. I th- shouldn't it have... I don't know, man. I have no fucking idea. What? Why would you do that? Now I'm just pissed off. a very educational podcast. So. No, now I'm just mad. <laughs> I'm just pissed off. Why would you have a whole river <laughs> just with a dumbass name? All right, we're going to get a video of you pissing into the Colorado River when we're down there. Yeah, this is a bootleg ass river. I'm not even. This is a bootleg motherfucker. Just a you, picture of you flipping off the Colorado River. Yeah, you have a Colorado River that's in Texas. I want a video of you just yelling "fuck you" at the Colorado River. <laughs> I mean, this could have all been avoided if Texas didn't steal Mexico and just not change the names. Yeah. Because I guess if you break it down, Colorado, like the color red. So I guess it's like the reddish river. Is that what Colorado means? The color red? It's something, I believe so. Mm. Yeah, something along those lines, I believe, is what Colorado was named for the reddish tint, I believe, the mountains gave off of the mountains. Yeah. When Are the they purple mountains? They are purple mountains, so I don't know why the tint was red, but here we yeah. are. Listen, none of don't this they, makes sense. Don't those mountains turn blue when it's cold? <laughs> Only when it's cold. <laughs> They're red the rest of the time. Yeah. Cold yeah. activated mountains. Exactly. They just, oh, shit, they just stay cool. I was so excited when those cold activated cans came out. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a big... Was that Coors Light or Bud Light that did that? This is Coors Light. It was Coors Light. Yeah, that's the banquet beer. You yeah. Know, you know that they're still cold activated, and I have to say, quite convenient. It's Very great con- to know. Yeah, it's like, oh. If you <laughs> pick up a warm 30 rack, you throw it in the fridge, you know when they're good to go. Honestly, it's pretty technology that's ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for a cold activated seltzer now. <laughs> Some White Claws or something. You've never had a White Claw, huh? No, and I was thinking of, I think we've discussed on this podcast of me but going back gonna... to Jesse Boozing game, but I decided when I was on acid a couple weeks ago that I'm not going to drink again. Jesse Boozing game. Yeah. I miss Boozing game. Maybe we'll get into some other things when we're in Texas. We'll see. What's up? We, we might have some other Texas things. Yeah. You mean meeting the cartel, right? I mean, I would be down for that. I, I feel like the cartel would have the most fun parties. If they, if the cartel was like, we're doing meth tonight, I would do meth with the cartel. <laughs> what? Well, I would. Maybe we'll do meth in Austin, Texas. I mean, Austin isn't that like Texas from what I hear. It's very like hipstery. It's basically like Brooklyn or San Francisco in Texas. Well, yeah. Apparently but if everyone... some real Texas shit like goes down, I'm down. Well, the thing is, um, apparently a bunch of people from San Francisco have moved from San Francisco to Texas, so it's become very similar to that. Yeah. Which is a little bit of a bummer because people from San Francisco suck. Um, <laughs> but... A lot of Bay Area douchebags, a lot of LA douchebags. A lot of bags. I mean, who knows how many shitty open micers have moved there now? Like, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll be, be some, joining them one day. There's going to be some Worcester douchebags in the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> going to be out there sacking a douche. 
we got yeah. some gigs. If you're if one of our fans in Austin, Texas, Ben and I will be at uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Monday night doing a comedy show. I think I'm there Wednesday night doing another show, but that one might be outdoors and it might be raining. So we'll see what's up. Is it the same guy? Is it through the same people? It's the same venue, different promoters, and maybe different parts of the bar or whatever. Did I'm you find sure. it through the? Did you find it through like a different connect, or was it the same connect? Uh, the Wednesday one, I saw the flyer and it said text this girl for booking, so I texted her. And then <laughs> the other one was through Rough Cut Comedy. Yeah, shout out to Rough Cut. Shout out Rough Cut Comedy. What's good? Man, so you just texted a random girl and for comedy and it worked? I just slid in the DMs. I was like, yo, what's up, baby? I'll be in town from this date to this date. We'd love to do your show. And then uh yeah, I sent my tape also. Yeah. I sent her I sent I did slide in that girl's DMs. Now yeah. I got a thing back. Uh oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I haven't seen fun. the tape, so I can't comment. I don't know what's on there. Well, you've seen the set, so She's probably right. Did you send her the one where you almost tripped on stage at the, at the end? <laughs> I hope you didn't send her that tape. No, that tape, that tape is really good if there's no sound. <laughs> if it's just you like pantomiming bits. Yeah. Just you doing I, act outs the whole time. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a voiceover of that set. <laughs> add a, can we revi- review that video and just add a laugh track? That would be amazing. <laughs> We should have a laugh track to that set because that tape would then be glorious. Oh, that would be great to shoot a tape in an empty room and then just add a laugh track to it. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. And then send that out to promoters. That's that my promotional work. tape. <laughs> this is the one with the laugh track. Yeah. Is there... We could be on to something here, Jesse. <laughs> I'm sure some terrible comedian has done this in the past. Or... Uh... A bunch of people like shot their specials in silence this year. I wonder if they would send that out as a tape to a club. This, Be like, yeah, like I have a one hour special. Here's the link. And it's just them in an empty room. <laughs> Some people did a couple of specials like that previously. Like, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Harlan Williams had one. That Drew Michael dude had one. Drew Michael. Yeah. He did like, he was like on different sets, I think. Yeah, he, he got like creative with it. Harlan Williams was like out in the desert, I believe, and I think like a pack of wild dogs like walked around the stage at one point. So there's a stage, and he's just in the desert, and there's no one there, and he's just telling jokes. Yeah, <sighs> that's. Yeah, rough. I don't know if I could watch an hour of that. No, that is hard to stomach. That's even I that'd think, be hard to do. I think Maria Bamford did one to her parents in her home. It's an interesting one. That would be even worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather do no one than your parents. The last thing, you know, my parents to this day have never seen me do comedy. Uh, not even a tape? Not one My time. mom regularly checks my YouTube. I think that's why my YouTube video has like almost 200 views. I think it's just my mom refreshing it once a week. Dang. that's not. Has your mom ever come to see you live? No. I only invited her to the weed club because I knew she wouldn't show up to that. So do you not want to? Do you not want your mom to watch you do comedy? I would prefer. Like I don't need that pressure or like that headache. Like she would like try to be cool about it and like not interact with me the whole time, and like that would just like stress me out too. Like just I don't know. I don't need that. If my parents came to the show, I always told myself if I did a show big, my whole goal in comedy is to do a show big enough that i want to invite my parents yeah exactly that's, i want it to be a special occasion i just don't that, want you coming to some shitty bar show yeah because then you think i'm some fucking loser they can't yeah. do anything like yeah. i want to do a show that's my whole goal in comedy do a show so big that my parents are requested to be there yeah i'd rather bomb at a sold out show at a club than just some random bar show or like some random little club show that's not mine it wouldn't even, it would have, for me to get to involve my parents, it would have to be bigger than like a club show. Yeah. A theater? It would, it'd have to be at least theater size. And it would have to be for like a, some sort of something renowned. It couldn't have just been like, I'm on like a random theater show. Like it'd have yeah. to be like me 
headlining a theater with my name on the marquee on some recorded special or something big. Mm. Preferably. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna tell my mom. Like, hey, just don't worry. Like, what? Eventually, when I get to theaters, I'll invite you. But until then, yeah, just, just take. And it I'm just gonna mom. suck at comedy for the, the rest of my life. So I don't <laughs> I'll never get that. So I, you'll never see it. Um. Nope. All right. That that was an hour, baby. It's that time. Let's wrap it up. We'll be in Austin, Texas next week. When you're listening to this, it'll be New Year's Day. Happy New Year 2020 is over. 2021 is here now. Yep. COVID-19 is over. COVID-2020-21-1 is here now. So Uh, we'll be in Austin. I think we're going to do a podcast. Are you bringing your laptop down to Austin? Yeah, I'll probably bring it. All right. Yeah. Then we'll do a podcast in the Airbnb from separate rooms. That'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be dope. Maybe get ciphers on his phone or something. Yeah. Maybe. Didn't you tell him to bring the Zoom recorder? Yeah. Might do some audio exclusives. We'll Ooh, see. I don't know. So many possibilities. Uh, last podcast, we said if you listen to the end to DM us Gravy Train and we would Venmo you $5. Did anyone DM you Gravy Train? No, I did not get a Gravy Train. No. So no one <laughs> listens this far. No one has listened this far. So what we should this week, this time, I'm going to say if anyone DMs me, Austin, Austin City Limits. Austin City Limits. Yeah, Austin City Limits. Slide in one of our DMs with Austin City Limits and we'll Venmo you $5. I will Venmo you f- at least 5 I might even do $5.50 if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling oh, funny. <laughs> I'll send you, uh, I was going to say the um, the area code for Austin. I just realized I don't know it. <laughs> oh. I know that Houston one. What, what's the Houston one? 713. You knew that because of Paul Wall? Uh, yeah, I think he says in the 713. Austin two, area code or, is 517, 512. All right, so we'll we'll Venmo you $5.12 if you That's say good. Austin yeah. City Limits. Austin City Limits for $5.12. Yeah, yeah. Holler at us on Instagram, everything, blah, blah, blah. Smash that. that no one's listening this far. I was going to say, like, smash that subscribe, baby. We're going to say this up top. We we're probably- all, our, all of our plugs up top from now on. So that way we can chase away both of our listeners right yeah. early on <laughs> instead of the middle where we normally do 15 minutes in. For my birthday, I was like, hey, please subscribe to my channel. And we got three subscribers from that. So not too All shabby. Right. Well, maybe we'll throw it out there. For, for the end of 2020, subscribe to The Lonely Nans. Yeah, I'm at the Ben Bo. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, New Year's resolution, drop a podcast every Monday. No every Monday. What. I like it. I like it. I like that. Are you making any other New Year's resolutions? No, I don't want to disappoint myself. I never make New Year's resolutions because if I cared enough, I would have started it <laughs> when I thought yeah. about it. It's I've silly to wait been, the been new year trying to, to start things. things like so. Yeah, just do things, not waiting for the new year. So New Year's right, resolutions baby. are no resolutions. All right, let's pose for this picture. All right. Uh, oh, let's show off our mullets. Jesse mullet game in the building. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, dude. You're looking heavy in the mullet. All right. <laughs> I think we got it. Yep, we're in. We're in. Got a good pick. Right. Good pick. Peace, y'all. Deuces.